My name is Thorsten Orgard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about the monochrome edition of the Leica Q2. There we go. Below the video here there is free stuff. You can click and download now and you can start reading my ebook in a few minutes and there's a few other goodies so just look under the video and download. Here we are again. I'm going to talk about the Leica Q, the Leica Q2 and here the Leica Q2 monochrome. This is not the first time I've been speaking about this. Uh, when the first Leica Q came out in 2015, I made a long user report and review about that camera. And I also have done a book about it, an ebook uh, about the history of the Q and how to use it, uh, tricks and everything. And I've also done a video masterclass. Um, I'll get back to the Leica Q, but then came the Leica Q2, which is more megapixels, than actually just a very few uh, design updates, uh, else the very same camera because the first one was so successful. And then Leica have done something very interesting, uh, they have made a black and white version of it. So this is the one, this is a Leica Q2 monochrome and it simply means that it's the same 47 megapixel camera, but it can only take black and white. And that makes it really fun and you could say if I should summarize my review already now it is that this is a genius camera it's very easy to use so if you like to take black and white then uh, this one you take the photo and you're basically done and that's not always how it is black and white photography is something you can get really enthusiastic about if you can then maybe you will be but i'm talking about me and the history of photography Black and white have always been very popular. You could say, of course, photography started with black and white, they didn't exist colors. And when colors came about in color film, then it became kind of like a Kodachrome moment. So everybody had to have uh, a camera and take color photos. And it was just awesome that you could do colors. And many of the professional photographers or serious photographers, whatever you, whatever you want to call them, or even serious photo enthusiasts, was like, no, that's not good enough. And it wasn't great colors to begin with, it was just colors, um, but it's enough to impress uh, the majority of people that they would take a camera with them on holiday or wherever and they would take uh, color photos. And in my opinion, there's kind of like a gap in photography because none of the serious photographers really was into color photography because it's no, black and white is better. Uh, so that kind of like leaves a space. Uh, it's something I touch on in my book uh, about composition where I say if you want to do something adventurous, if you want to do something exciting and new in photography, you should actually take up color photography because nobody ever <laughs> did. Uh, there's very few photographs who took color serious and, and most of those who did uh, went into color when it was still very slow film, it means they needed a lot of light or long exposure. One of the things, and that means there's a lot of still living, there's a lot of empty landscapes, there's not a lot of people in action uh, of the kind that you see in, in black and white photography. So that's still an untapped area you can go into, you can actually make it uh, your mission in life or your photography to make high fidelity colors and make photographs that have harmony and all the other things you can do with colors that very few actually ever did. But that's not what we're talking about today because now we're talking black and white photography. Black and white photography is uh, very simple because you could say unlike color photography the only thing you look at is the light. It's how much light is there. Is it a dark tone, a dark gray tone, a lighter gray tone, a mid tone, or is it light or is it white? That's all there is and that's what creates all the shapes. And you say light is extremely important for photography, just the word photography means to write with light, so that gives an idea that is all you do with a camera is you capture light. Uh, and when you look at something in color or black and white, doesn't matter, what makes the image on, in your eyes but also in a camera is reflection of light. So it's not actually, you don't actually photograph the sun, you're photographing a landscape or a cityscape or a person's face 
and the way that that look, the shape of it, and what is accentuated and what is in the shade defines the shape of it and this, this define the level of texture and details and everything and that is the reflection of light. So if you imagine for example a face then if you move the face or you could say if you move the light source but if it's the sun you don't do that so you move the face or you move the camera in relation to the face the reflection of the face is going to be different and of course prominent in the eyes you will have a reflection in the eyes that move or it become it disappears or you get what is called a pin light a little bit of reflection but also the whole texture of the hair and the face and everything and the shape of everything uh, is defined by light. So that is how important light is. And you can say the great thing with, with black and white photography is that you only deal with light, basically light and darkness and grades of it. And it makes it very simple and it also makes it very different from what you see with the eyes because everything you see with the eyes is color. Um, and color is made up of red, green and blue. RDB in short, uh, and that is what creates the colors. And once you get into color photography, there's a lot of things you have to be aware of. You have to have color harmony. You have is this the right color of the grass? Or does it look too plastic or is it dark? Or you know, all kinds of stuff. You have skin, is it too red or is it too pale or what is it? Um, so you have all these colors you have to manage, and in black and white, you just don't have to deal with this stuff. And that is probably one of the reasons that people love black and white and you can say here I have a good old uh, film camera and this is one where you would put in black and white film because black and white film was great because you could roll up the film yourself in your dark room and save some money and you had a lot of film rolls then you go out and photograph them you go home and you develop them in your kitchen or in your dark room and then you can go into the dark room you can make your own prints. Color photograph is a whole entirely different thing uh, you could roll your own uh, color film, I think, uh, but nobody really did. And when you develop, it has to be a certain temperature and a lot of bats. It's very expensive. You should change the, the chemistry every day and so on. And also, in the, in the, when you make color prints in the dark room, it's a whole science to do that. So black and white is easier in so many ways. And you could say, um, what I usually say is when you look at a photograph, what hits you first is the emotion. What the emotional impact of it. So you don't look at the sharpness, you don't look at how does it have this many tones, does it have rule of thirds or triangles or circles or whatever. You see a photo and it hits you or it doesn't. And that is the essence of photography, that's what you make and you would say that is of course you make it with light and you can accentuate those things with light, you can make scenes where you, you play with almost film noir or like very dramatic light and, and shade or you can do things that is very gray and gray. You can make a lot of beauty with black and white and the great thing about black and white photographs, you look at black and white photo and it's like new because it's not how the world looks with your eyes, this is a representation of it. And of course it's black and white, so it's different, but it's also seen through the soul of an artist. Back to the Leica Q2 here in monochrome, uh, I had uh, one of the first Leica Q when it came out in 2015. It was like a very new camera in the way uh, that of course it's compact, it's very high quality lens, it's very high quality design, everything is very simple and very intuitive, uh, almost as beautiful as when we had the first iPhone where it's just, you, it's just logical how to use this and it doesn't have an overflow of uh, all kinds of buttons and then you can say it has the best lenses in the world which is Leica lenses and it has a fixed 28mm lens and it's a 1.7 which means you can make this depth of field and also have a full frame sensor which is part of being able to make blurry background. So if you look at people's photos, you see iPhone photos, it's like yeah that's nice. Then you see something where the background is blurred or the foreground is blurred and you kind of like the eye is led to something that's in focus and the rest is just dreamy. That is depth of field and that is something you can make with a large sensor, that means it's not that large, but it's 24 times 36 millimeters, it's what's called full frame. It's not what you have in the iPhone because you have a microscopic uh, sensor in that, so you cannot make this depth of field, this blur background. But that you can do with this, and we have a 1.7 lens, you can particularly make it because you focus on something here and the background is automatically going to be blurred out. And 1.7 it simply sits here in the lens, so is that the lens is wide open, then you can stop it down and then you get more uh, depth of focus means that more is going to be in focus. 
So if you want that, you can also make that. Uh, so in many ways, you would say this is an extremely elegant and sexy camera from the moment it came out, and it was a huge success. Uh, it's actually designed by a young uh, Swedish intern at Leica. So he was, I think he was 21 years back then, and he came to Leica as an intern, and then he was hired, and that was his project to make the design of Leica Q, and he did a really good job, uh, and Leica have stayed with this design. He moved back to Göteborg in Sweden because he was a little bit homesick and then now he moved on to doing back design and he actually just won some, some design awards. So he's a clever, clever guy and he made the design of this camera and you can say he's the reason why it is so simple. Anyways, that was the first Q in 2015 and then came, of course, four years later came the Q2. And what happened? Well, they put in a 47 megapixel sensor instead of 24 megapixels. So now you have higher resolution and in theory you can record more details, but that's the way it goes, more megapixels. And then they updated uh, the viewfinder a little bit here. Uh, so it sits better and has a diopter adjustment here. You can press out and you can adjust it for your eyesight and press it in again. Um, and then there's this dial up here that now has uh, that is very easy, you just press it here and then you can set the ISO here uh, by the wheel here uh, and that's basically one of the few essential things you have to do with this camera. And 47 megapixels and then came finally the monochrome version. Monochrome is something that is a tradition for, you could say, a lot of photography but it's particular maybe for Leica photography. Um, when you could say Leica is 100 years old, so a lot of the reportages uh, and historic photographs made with Leica, of course, is made with black and white film. And you could say in that tradition, when Leica, two or three years after Leica made the first uh, uh, full frame camera of the classic Leica M, is this one. Then two or three years after they came with the first full frame, they said, okay, let's come with a black and white edition. And that is this one. It's just a Leica monochrome. And it is a digital camera and it's just like the color version of it, except they put in a black and white sensor. And the way they did it was that they stripped off the so-called Bayer filler. There is like a, a filler in front of the sensor that separates red, green and blue into, uh, uh, you could say, four different pixels, each one, and then that's how you make color for it. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> It's gone in this one, and now it's just light. It's just how much light is there. It doesn't matter what color or anything it has. It just records light. And this thing to have a black and white digital camera introduces a lot of simplicity that uh, you could say you can yawn for because uh, you can get a lot of complicated stuff, but finding something that is really simple and just feels good to use, that can be hard to find. And then if you go back to this monochrome version here, is it is like surprisingly easy to make black and white photos. You could say this one, uh, as a very new thing, came with raw files or DND files for black and white, and that's very unusual. You could say, of course, many cameras you can you can you take color photos in raw or DND, and you can also make a black and white JPEG from it. And JPEG is kind of like it's not a smaller format or something, it's just a simpler format. A raw format is where you record all the data from the sensor is dumped into a file. So you can, you can adjust a lot of things in the computer based on actual recording data. A JPEG is just a flat line of that. So if you want to adjust the exposure or anything, there's not really anything to take from. So when you do that, you have to calculate based on that one layer of data there is, and that's why the quality is a little bit less. Uh, refined or something when you do that. It can be done, uh, but RAW is better. So suddenly we have, in this one back then, it was an 18 megapixel black and white uh, sensor. So it's almost like you go from an 18 megapixel color sensor to 18 megapixel black and white. It's almost like you have four times more pixels to play with. It's a little bit not really what you have, but in a way you have more details. Uh, but mainly you have the simplicity. You don't have to deal with the color temperature or color harmony or if the skin tone has the right color or anything or if your aunt's dress is too blue or too red, uh, it's all black and white and it's very artistic and it's very classic photography. So what happened for me was that 
uh, I have a few Leicas and my fiance would use whatever camera uh, she wanted to use and then we were going somewhere on a trip and I said okay you, you, you need your own camera which one let's find the camera which was kind of interesting to to define for a person what is the right camera for you because if you have many cameras then you you never really have to think about it but if you have to find what is it actually what kind of photos do you want to take do I care about color do I care about that it's black and white uh, what type of lens do I want to do what type of photos do I want to do it does it have to be a fast camera can it be slow or all this so we decided okay or she decided this is a portable camera and she doesn't care about colors so this is how we ended up taking it like a q2 is excellent because it's black and white it's extremely simple to use it's extremely simple to have with you either over the shoulder or you have it in the back and you just take it up and use it and once we get got into this you could say it is very simple um, you could say in this case here the camera is an autofocus you can also set it to manual focus if you like that better about 50 percent of the people that i see with like a q or q2 they use manual focus but here we said okay autofocus and it's set to spot uh, focus so you point at a spot and then you can press the release half down and then you lock it on that focus and then you can recompose and it stays with that focus so that's just as good as manual and then we say okay 1.7 is uh, the most fun to shoot with because you can do uh, depth of focus so you have the focus on the face but the background is blurred or the people next to it is blurred uh, so it stays with this and then you can say then uh, the camera can be here on aperture priority you can also turn the dial here you can go manually but let's just say we stay on, on aperture priority or auto as you can also call it then you're down to a very basic concept where all you have to do is you turn on the camera here and then you have to look what is my ISO so that's kind of a joke we have what's your ISO and here it's 200 and the thing is when you have a camera like this either you photograph in daylight so you go 200 ISO or if you go in the evening outside or you go inside where it's dark you go 3200 ISO you can do all kinds of other ISO and everything but there is only those two 200 and 3200 ISO and why is that why is it that it's just a matter of what is your ISO well because this also have an electronic shutter so if you're outside in sunshine and you shoot 1.7 uh, you're gonna get up to maybe 15,000 of a second or something because there's so much light and you're shooting 200 ISO but it's not a problem because the camera goes higher than that a faster shutter speed so you're not gonna risk it's gonna be overexposed so 200 ISO you can do anything in sun, sunlight or less light overcast whatever it works for all this because you have a 1.7 lens very simple then when you go out uh, at night or you go inside a place where it's dark you go 3200 ISO because now you have you increase the sensitivity of the sensor uh, so now you can actually take pictures in the dark because you have a 1.7 lens and you 1.7 and 3200 ISO together means that you're going to be photographing at maybe 1 60th of a second 125th of a second or 1 500th of a second or maybe even 1 2000th of a second if it's like not that dark so that's all within the limits it's not so slow that you get camera shake uh, because it's very easy to hold the camera still and there's no moving parts so that is uh, the simplicity of using this camera you, it's portable you can have it with you it's very easy to use uh, it has a fairly large battery here it goes uh, straight out of the bottom here so you could say if you're gonna use it for a whole day or something you take an extra battery uh, that's basically all so that's how simple uh, the camera is and of course then the joke is that see I've used this for a while then I made a uh, article and a video about which lens are you and that's basically you can look it up on YouTube and you can look it on my website uh, but it goes through different painters painters through history and if you look at each painter Picasso and and so on they all have you could say if they were photographing they would be using an 80 millimeter or 35 or 28 uh, whatever and that's something you can see in the paintings and just like painters have a focal length a way that they want to see the world and and frame it so do you so anyway she sees this and she says oh uh, I just found out I'm a 50 millimeter person 
And that of course is a problem because now you have to have a camera like this and put on a 50. So this is like almost three times more than this camera. But then again, there is this uh, interesting thing with this one that you have 47 megapixel here. Uh, so that means you can crop quite a bit. You have an extremely sharp lens, so you can crop quite a bit and you still have a very high resolution picture. So even if it's not 47 megapixels, maybe it's 8 megapixels, but 8 megapixels you can do a fairly big size print. And you can say for most things you use for Instagram and websites and you send it in emails and you put it on your iPad uh, or even a computer screen, uh, it's enough. Uh, and you can say that's the only limitation on this camera is that you have a 28 millimeter 1.7 lens, so that is a wide angle lens like this, but it does have digital crop in it, so you can pretend it's 75 or 50 or 35 millimeter, uh, but it is a 28 millimeter. And of course, uh, I keep warning people and then they laugh, but then I meet them months later and I say, it's true what you said, and what is it that I said? I say, once you get this camera, then in a matter of weeks or months, you want one of these and then you want this one. And it just happens. Uh, it's not a joke uh, and it's not really a warning because I, I think it's okay. You can have uh, all those cameras if you want to, uh, but that is basically uh, what happens with this one. But this is an excellent starting point uh, for anybody who wants to get into real photography. Let's say you come from an iPhone and now you want to do real photography, high quality. And that is one of the comments I would hear about this camera. Uh, that people actually went from an iPhone 13 Pro or whatever uh, and that's very good pictures, but then you get this one and as soon as you open those pictures on the computer you say, wow, this is so much better than an iPhone. This is a tiny camera and that is the point that is something you can carry with you and it's not super heavy or anything and you can actually bang it into all kinds of things. You can see this one have uh, worn edges and stuff from normal use, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the great thing is that this is actually professional quality. So it's not like this is like just a, a little tourist camera or something and when I grow up or whatever, I'm going to get a real camera. No, uh, the truth of the matter is that you can actually not, uh, it's very hard for you to tell if it's taken with this camera. This is a 60 megapixel like an M11 and this is a 28 1.4 millimeter lens. Um, and this is like a cube with 47 megapixel and a 28 1.7 millimeter lens. Uh, it's designed by the same man, the same design team. This is a $9,000 camera, $6,000 lens. This is a $5,500 camera. And when you look at the pictures, you can't basically tell the difference. So it comes down to, in my opinion, the most important feature of any camera is that it's portable. It's something you have with you. And also, you like to have it with you and you like to use it and you're proud of what you can make out of it. Uh, and that's how you should always choose cameras. You should not listen to reviews or read specifications. You should basically imagine you go to a camera store and maybe this is the four cameras they have. Uh, 1,000, 12,000, 20,000, 500 dollars. Which one is the most appealing? That's your camera because you can take the 40,000 dollar one and then you never use it. So you should have taken the one that appealed to you. So. This camera has a lot of appeal and you say it does look fairly harmless when you use it. Uh, there is a photograph I like a lot and that is Greg Williams. Uh, he's a British, he spent a lot of time in Hollywood, I've seen him around and he usually has two like a Q cameras, so they hang here, they have different strap lengths, so you have them hanging here on the chest and he just walk up to uh, film stars and everybody else and take their photos and he does a lot of backstage and he even does video with them and you can check his website for his video that he does with this. Um, so he used it professionally. He also used like a SL2 which is kind of like same sensor, different camera system where you can change the lenses and everything and it's more bulky, it's like a real camera uh, which means it's a pain in the butt to carry it around. This is not a pain. So he uses a professional and I will also use my Q and Q2 monochrome for whenever it fits in. I'm never afraid that this is not good enough quality or something because it is. So uh, fundamentally you could stay with this camera and have nothing else 
uh, most likely that's not how it's going to be, but you could do it if you want to. And just look at me, I almost made it for just having this camera. So I've talked a lot about the Leica Q and the Leica Q2. I mean, for both cameras, I have my, uh, my ebook. Uh, they're all about uh, like a Q ebook and they're all about like a Q2 ebook and I have masterclass in this. So it's, it's covered and there's also free articles on my website where you can read a lot about it. And of course, the monochrome is covered in the like a Q2 uh, video masterclass and in the book. Uh, but you can say the essence of this camera is that, and what is really surprising to me actually, is that. When you have this camera and you, you, say, you go, what is my ISO? You set your ISO to daylight or indoor and you take photos. The moment you import those photos in the computer, you're done. There's not a lot of stuff to do. I mean, it's raw files and you can edit a lot in them, but generally it has a beautiful classic black and white look. And you could say, this one have a more raw, more flat look. I mean, traditional uh, raw files from the Leica M monochrome uh, has a more flat look and that is uh, intentionally you could say that a DND a raw file should be flat because then you start adjusting, you increase the contrast, you change the exposure, you do this and that. Uh, and you can also do it with this one and, and sometimes you should, but generally it's just you take a black and white photo and it's like, it's just as simple as when you had one of these cameras, you put in a film, so you can say if you put in an Ilford film in this one back in the day, you develop it and you make prints in the dark room or you scan the film it has the Ilford look. And in the same simple way as this was, that there wasn't a lot of things you could or would change or had to change in that black and white look, the Leica Q2 has a very final black and white look. So you could say even if you have I mean, iPhone or you have a Leica M or you have a Canon, whatever, something, and now you want to get into black and white, this is a very easy way to do it because it has the whole packages here that is compact. It's super fast and everything, and very high quality lens, but also the files you get out of it is not going to be some rocket science that, well, how do I make black and white of this? It's pretty final, and that is kind of surprising uh, in a good way. I think that's about what I wanted to say about the Leica Q2 monochrome. Uh, I'll refer you to my website, there's the free articles about the history of the Q and of course the history of the Leica that goes 100 years back. And I also have in my ebook uh, about the Leica Q2 and Leica Q2 monochrome, I have a whole new section about some of the historic photographers that used uh, Leica uh, through history. And one of the remarkable things is uh, in the beginning of Leica, already in the beginning of Leica, where you could say photography went from, it was very, you have to wear a white kilt and know about chemistry and so on to do photography. Then came uh, a fairly small portable camera, the Leica. And the amount of women that took up photography professionally and made amazing photographs with the Leica is uh, stunning. And that's part of, the, uh, part of that book, just as a side remark. Uh, and that's something that happened naturally. It's not that Leica offered the cameras to women for half price or they said uh, something special. It was just uh, an attraction that they thought this is cool. And, and I love, I love that different people take photographs, different age groups, different uh, religions, different cultures, different sex. It's awesome. Uh, that's how you get to see uh, the viewpoint of others and also you get to show uh, your world. So if you live in India, it's going to be one way of seeing things. If you live in Norway, it's different. If you're a man, it's one way. If it's a woman, it's another way. Uh, but that's great. So that's part of the, of the book. And then there's the video class that goes through the whole menu, how to set it up ideally. Uh, what is the different buttons? That's one of my favorite things. It's like what is all the buttons and symbols that is on cameras because a lot of it is very old school and it's still that way and that means sometimes people miss what does it mean that there's like an infinity symbol here, an eight. What does it mean? And that is infinity symbol just mean when you focus to there, it goes all the way to the mountain and beyond. Uh, all that stuff I cover and then uh, I'll not uh, omit this opportunity now where you're looking at that this is uh, camera steps I make uh, very high quality uh, camera steps, uh, high, high quality in the world that is very nice leather and very well made, 
work here with hand painted edges and everything, but mainly they're simple. They're not, uh, and, and you can adjust it. It's like this is the length. It comes in two lengths, 125 and uh, 145, because that's the size most people need to have it across the chest. Uh, and this is yellow. This is kind of like a little bit risky. Uh, most of them are black and there's also green uh, and red. And then I also do my own uh, ventilated shades. This is not the, sh the ventilated shade that Leica comes with. You could say often you have what is called a ventilated shade. And it's a shade that is supposed to shade for the light coming in from the side so you could destroy the picture. Modern lenses is so well coated these days, it's not really a problem. Uh, so I look more of them at, as protection. And the one that the camera comes with, I don't, I'm not a big fan. So I did this one, it's more classical looking. Uh, and it's ventilated so you can see through it here. But this is a digital. EVF, so you don't have any need to see through here, as you do, you can see it comes from this one, you look this way out, so that's why it is ventilated, there's holes here. So this is just for show. Uh, and this one is a matte black one that goes with this body that is matte black. Uh, the normal Q, and like a Q2, is uh, more glossy black, so that's the, the normal black paint shade. And then I also make uh, in different colors, and you see this one is one I particularly like. This is uh, a red one, and these are patented hoods that fit exactly for the camera. Uh, and I think this looks beautiful. You could say maybe it's a little bit over the top, but maybe that is uh, the intention. Uh, and then when that's too much, then you, you go back to uh, the matte black one, and then everything is fine again. But it's like a protective thing uh, that you bump uh, the camera into something, nothing happens to the lens, it's just the shade. And if it goes really bad, then uh, the shade breaks or bends, and then maybe you get a new one, or you can adjust it or something. So that's my story about the Leica Q2 monochrome. Uh, and if I should sum it up, I'll just say it's very easy. You decide your settings here, and then you turn on the camera, and you look what is my ISO. One for sunshine, one for indoor in the evening. And then you take photos and you import them, and it's very easy to develop a style. Uh, and most likely you will actually just love the way it does it. Then the next problem you have to face is that now you have this and you fall in love with it and then you start looking at these uh, other cameras and then suddenly you have a collection. But that's a problem for the future. Thank you for watching and remember till I see you next time to always wear a camera.